This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It's an all-in-one website platform for managing your brand, the one I'm currently using to build my illustration portfolio. More on that later. And today we're going to talk about the best watercolor techniques for painting birds. I've painted a million different birds over the years and recently I've noticed this interesting pattern. So I went back and looked at all my watercolor compositions and realized that nearly every time I painted a bird, I used the same approach very specific set of techniques depending on the type of bird feathers in my reference. And today I'm going to show you exactly what these techniques are, which brushes I use and how to build your layers of color so you can achieve the same realistic effect on any bird you like to paint. I put together this composition so I can show you my techniques step by step, including the leaves and the berries, and you can practice painting them on your own. As always, if you're interested in painting the entire thing with me in real time, you can join me on Patreon. This tutorial is about three hours long and includes black and white outlines. Now, before we get our brushes and paints, let's take a moment to appreciate the variety of bird feathers and talk about different watercolor techniques that we need to use in order to depict them on paper. We know that feathers are not just colorful decorations, they're complex structures that serve distinct functions on the body of the bird. For example, down feathers provide warmth and protection while colorful contour feathers provide camouflage against predators. What's important for us as artists is what we see on the surface and what we need to paint. So primarily the first two feather varieties that cover the exterior of the bird, the contour and the flight feathers. In this beautiful bird, we have a very defined body of orange contour feathers up on top and then the blue flight feathers on the wing and the tail at the bottom. This is why I picked this bird for this topic because it clearly shows these segments and each segment will require a different set of watercolor techniques. Let's go to it step by step starting with the orange contour feathers. These short feathers are typically distributed evenly over the body of the bird, making up the overall shape. The part we see is colored, while the base is typically colorless. The overall effect is usually very soft and delicate color transitions, requiring a lot of wet on wet color blending at first, with a little bit of texture painted using wet on dry method in the next layer. So I will use a variety of yellows and oranges to create a light background wash, and my pigments are Benzo Yellow, Hansa Yellow Deep, and Transparent Pyro Orange. I'm using a larger round brush to gently apply the color, never reaching full saturation because we want the first layer to be very translucent so you can build more details in the second one. Once I cover the entire orange segment, I will let it dry completely. Let's skip the blue feathers for now, we'll come back to them in a minute. And now I can introduce more saturated colors. First, I'm going to accentuate some shadows, still using my larger brush and more sweeping strokes, wet on wet, around the eye. And then I can slowly transition to very short and deliberate strokes, only using the tip of my brush to enhance the texture using wet on dry technique. In order to make the contour feathers look more realistic, you want to position the tip of your brush in the direction of the feathers. So look at your reference photo and notice these subtle shadows going from the eye area and out. Some of them are pointing up towards the crown, others are pointing down, framing these cascades that catch light. And you can paint around these highlights, just leaving your first wash of color to shine through. But notice how the edges of each highlight are not smooth because of the way I'm applying the colors. It's a whole bunch of tiny strokes, so the lighter shape of the highlight comes out looking more realistic. And you can follow with some darker details in the third layer, again using wet on dry method, but this time I'm introducing a bit of brown to accentuate the darkest details, still using very short strokes. And I can't stress this part enough, the brush positioning is key, so we can mimic the natural organic shadows that arise from this body of small feathers overlapping each other, really capturing the texture and building a sense of three-dimensional form without having to worry about every single detail. 
Now let's go back to the blue feathers. They will require a different watercolor technique, but we will start the same way, with a soft wash of color to prepare for so-called negative painting. And when I'm done, I can't wait to include this bird in my portfolio, along with my other bird compositions. And I mentioned at the start that I'm using Squarespace to build my website. So let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace, and why I'm enjoying this platform form so much. First of all, it's so easy to use their guided design system. They call it the Squarespace Blueprint and you can launch a completely personalized, beautiful website without having to learn any complicated technology. When I say it's beautiful, I mean it. They really took care of any possible scenario and stylistic preference when it comes to their flexible templates. Basically, you can choose from a variety of professional layouts and styling options, adjust it as much as you want, add your story and your painting if you're building an art portfolio like I'm doing, add products for sale, even videos to better showcase your work, and have it automatically optimized for any device. This is important for me because I don't have to worry about anything but making beautiful art. All my paintings and all my professional projects will look amazing on the phone and on a desktop computer, and the entire website is optimized for search. So your work can get discovered more often and by more people. Make sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website go to squarespace.com slash Anna Bucciarelli. This way you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Back to the bird, now I'm going to show you the second type of feathers, so-called flight feathers, and we find these on the wings and the tail of our birds. They're usually elongated and they contribute to the overall silhouette. Sometimes they display intricate color patterns, but here we just have some light and dark blue segments, so it will be relatively easy to capture. And so the best watercolor technique here is called negative painting, meaning we painted the first wash of color just like we did on the orange feathers, and now using negative painting technique, we paint around each feather, just focusing on the shadows. So for example, on the wing, it will be these elongated lines. The lighter feathers will be done in a very similar way, just capturing the shadows under each feather. And then in the final third layer, we can add some texture here and there, but the main technique is negative painting, meaning painting around the lighter parts, capturing the silhouette by putting colors in the negative space around each feather. The way I create these soft shadows is by applying a little bit of color first and then blending it with a clean damp brush so the edges of my shadows are not too harsh. The pigments I'm using are indigo, some splashes of thylo blue, and Payne's gray for the darkest areas. You can also introduce some endothrone blue, which is already present in indigo, and I'm gonna use the same blue later on to add some shadows on the tropical greenery. And now that the bird is done, it's time to add a tropical forest around it, and I will show you exactly how I did it and give you some tips on the colors and techniques I used. This part is actually a lot less complicated, only two layers of color, and it starts with building the right composition that complements the main subject. So when you're building your watercolor layouts, I want you to think about the main focal point, the thing you want to highlight, and add it additional elements in a way that reinforces this focal point. In this case, I placed my bird in the center, creating just enough space to add something in the top left and bottom right corners. Note that the bird itself creates a very strong diagonal line, so adding leaves and plants on the opposite corners creates an illusion of two lines crossing, a little bit of tension and visual interest. It's a common trick I use in my composition positions and I have an entire video on how I'm building them and which resources I use for my reference photos here on my channel. I will leave a link in the video description below. My first wash of color on the leaves is going to be very very light. 
for my monstera plant i am blending some green gold and aqua green using wet on wet technique and for the dry leaves on the right hand side i'm gonna use yellow ochre and maybe a little bit of that same orange that i used on the bird feathers the tree branch can use some granulating color I mainly applied Tundra Violet from Schmincke to add some texture. And the berries can be done using really any warm red. I decided to go with Scarlet Lake from Winsor Newton. It's hard to get these small shapes right every time. And my trick here is to always leave a few highlights. It's more than enough to indicate the spherical shapes without getting lost in the details. Once everything is dry, we can add some definition in the second layer. And once again, I'm going to rely on negative painting technique to paint around the veins. Building my colors slowly, going one segment to another, and even introducing a little bit of darker blue so I can have some deep shadows and maintain palette continuity. Notice it's the same endothrone blue I used on the bird feathers, so it kind of echoes throughout the composition. I'm going to add some rich brown to accentuate the dry leaves and maybe paint a few extra shadows on the berries so I have better definition in that area without getting too detailed. The color I'm using here is called Perlin Violet. It's a bit more vibrant than a typical brown. And it's the same one I used on the darkest shadows on the orange feathers. Notice again the palette continuity here. Even in the most vibrant compositions where you have very distinct segments of color, it's always good to recycle your colors throughout so that everything looks more unified and cohesive. And I'm going to reinforce this effect by glazing some warm yellow over the leaves in the final step, right in that area where they come close to the warm orange and yellow feathers. And if you want to see more step-by-step -step tutorials on how to paint watercolor birds, I have an entire playlist here on my channel. Thank you for watching and painting with me. I will see you soon.